How are you? And thanks for tuning into another video. My name is David B. Lyons, and this is another vlog from The Open Author. And today, we're gonna to be discussing how you can write that opening chapter. I know there's an awful lot of pressure on people when it comes to chapter number one, but I'm gonna take that pressure off you and give you just this very specific elements required when opening your novel. Let's get straight down to it. Okay, so you might have done perhaps a creative writing course or maybe a workshop before or maybe you've been trawling through the internet to, to find out exactly what's required in an opening chapter. Well, any of the information that you found, I sort of want you to put on the back burner or even forget about it for now because I'm going to break it down into, the, into a minuscule amount of information that I want you to carry on board when you're writing your first chapter. Because my major problem with a lot of the information that's out there about chapter number one is that it gives you way too much information. And if you are trying to think of every element that somebody has told you that should go into chapter number one, well then you're just not gonna enjoy the process of writing and therefore you're probably gonna forget about the manuscript because you're feeling too pressured or too bogged down with the laborious task of getting everything in there that you think should be in there. I don't want you to feel that pressure, okay? So I'm gonna give you two main tips two big elements that are required in an opening chapter and we're gonna discuss how we can go about that, okay? But just before we do, I want to just explain to you why the opening chapter is so pivotal and so important in your manuscript. So there's three real reasons why it's particularly important. One, as you know, first impressions count. So, so many people will judge you by your opening two or three or four thousand words. So they will decide whether or not they're gonna follow through with this novel based on your opening. So first impressions count, of course they do. We, we know that. So it, it's, it's very important to get off to a strong start in your book. But not also that, when it comes to being published and you are submitting to agents and publishers, they're gonna ask you for about the first five or 10,000 words. So it's very important that the start of your novel for the sake of landing a publishing deal or an agent is as strong as it possibly can be. And aside from that, uh, I, I guess, I'm probably wrong, but I guess if you're shopping for books, you're shopping on Amazon, where about 90% of books are sold these days. Um, and what you will find on Amazon is that there's a look inside option when somebody's perusing all the books that they, they, they might contemplate buying. And they might click on the look inside and of course they get the free opening chapter and there they will make a decision on whether they want to buy this book. So it's so important for a number of reasons but more so because it just sets up the reader into a position of deciding whether or not they want to continue with this story. So it really is important to get chapter number one right but I don't want you to feel any pressure to include all of the ingredients and all of the elements that somebody might have told you are required in an opening chapter. That's nonsense, and I'm gonna tell you why now. So it is likely if you have researched what should go into an opening chapter, you will have been bogged down with information such as this that you must establish in your opening chapter. You must establish your setting. You must establish all about your main character. You must establish the book's tone and feel, and you must establish the book's narrative style, and you must establish your hook pretty much straight away. And all these elements, these different ingredients that you think, Jesus, how am I gonna get all of this into an opening chapter? Well, listen, you don't have to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you how you can dilute all of this pressure and get a great opening chapter down that will make your reader want to continue reading. So in the simplest of terms, I'm gonna give you the number one rule or the number one consideration that should be going on inside your brain when you're writing the opening chapter. So instead of trying to you know, get all of those elements in and all these things that you should be establishing, this is your only goal for your opening chapter, okay? And it is, you should be aiming to furrow the brow of your reader, i.e. Your reader should have questions whizzing around their mind after they read your opening chapter. Questions that they know they're gonna get the answers to if they continue reading your book. 
So the obvious question now is, how do I make my reader's brow furrow? Well, remember when I mentioned all the, the list of all these things that people say you should have in an opening chapter, such as you must establish tone, you must establish setting, and you must establish characterization, and you must establish the hook. I want you to get your fingers around that word establish and squeeze it and then toss it up and fuck it in the bin, okay? Establish my ass. That's only gonna put pressure on you if you feel that you need to establish all of these elements within your opening chapter. I want you to change that word establish and turn it into tease. Because I want you to tease the hook of your story in your opening chapter. I want you to tease your characters in the opening chapter, I want you to tease setting and I want you to tease the tone, okay? So don't feel as if you have to establish all these things because that's way too much pressure. And also, it's gonna be a bit shit, the opening chapter, if you have spelt out all of these types of things in detail. But I do want you to tease them out and I'm gonna show you how you can do that now. So we'll take probably the most important one of all those elements that are required. Uh, the, the most important one being hook, okay? So you want to tease your hook as much as you can. And I'm gonna give you some examples of how some really good authors tease their hook pretty much straight away, okay? So let's take a look at some opening lines from some great books that really just tease a hook in, make the reader's brow furrow and make them go, geez, I wanna find out what happens next. So let's have a look at the first uh, example I have here. So this is from a favorite author of mine, contemporary author of mine, she also happens to be Irish, and she writes some great psychological thrillers. So this is from Liz Nugent, and it's from her brilliant second book called Lying in Wait. And the opening line of that book is, my husband didn't mean to kill Annie Dial, but the lying tramp deserved it. Now that is already teasing a hook. So straight away, your reader's going, well, <laughs> I'm getting on with this story. I wanna find out what's going on here. And so that's what I mean by teasing your hook. You're not establishing your hook, you're teasing it in, okay? You want your reader to continue reading. So let's have a look at another example here. So this is from the brilliant Ian M. Banks, and this is from his book, The Crow Road. And the opening line is, it was the day my grandmother exploded. That's it. That's his opening line. Already, you want to continue reading. So he's teasing in some hook here and you're already, as a reader, thinking, what the hell is going on here? And just give you another example, okay? And, and, and I'll explain why I'm giving these examples specifically now in a minute. So this is from a great Eastern writer called Ha Jin. And this is a brilliant book called Waiting. I read, I read this about 10 years ago. And the opening line stunned me. It is, every summer, Lin Kong returned to Goose Village to divorce his wife, Shu Yu. Every summer he came back to divorce his wife. So I'm already gone, what the hell is this? Okay, so I have tried to implement this into my writing and in fact, it's not easy to do and I'm not gonna suggest that you have to get this into your opening line or you have to tease your hook in your opening line. What I am suggesting is you tease a hook like this in your opening chapter. So you're not giving everything away, but you're making your reader go, what's gonna happen next? So that's your number one requirement in chapter one. So I have written this line as the opening line for my second novel, inspired by these great writers. I don't know why I'm smiling when I've just been told I have a 50% chance of dying today. So that is the opening line for my second novel called Whatever Happened to Betsy Blake. And as I said, it's inspired by this idea of teasing your hook as soon as you possibly can. Now, as I mentioned to you, you don't have to feel the pressure of coming up with a great opening line that makes the reader's eyes pop and, and, and then their brow furrow. But I want you to get this type of feeling in your reader across in your opening chapter. The reason I've given you examples of great opening lines is because I don't wanna spend you know, an hour here reading out great opening chapters for you. But I've given you examples of lines, opening lines that should tease to you exactly what's required in your whole opening chapter, okay? So you need to be getting that hook across in your opening chapter. You need to be making this furrow, okay, in your reader, and that's how you do it. You tease the hook. 
And aside from teasing in the hook, I also want you to tease in those other elements. So forget, remember what I said, forget about establishing your character straight away. I want you to tease in your characters. So, so many students that I've worked with over the years, they feel as if they have to paint the picture of what their character looks like and who their character is straight away because they think that will give their reader a platform and an image on which to build on. So they think, okay, I know what this main character looks like, I can get on with the story. But that's really not good writing, that's not what a reader wants. A reader doesn't have to have an obvious picture painted of the main character straight away. So I'm just going to give you an example of bad characterization in an opening chapter. So let's have a look at this. So if you have a character called Jacinta say and you have an idea of what she might look like, an, an amateur writer might write something like this in their opening chapter. Jacinta was tall, skinny, no shape, no hips, no breasts, narrow shoulders, and her hair was the same, long and straight. It went all the way down to where her ass should be. Her chin was pointy, but not as much as her crooked nose was. So that's sort of painting a picture of what the character looks like, but that's not exactly what a reader wants. So you might do something a lot more subtle. You might tease what your character looks like rather than just explicitly explaining or describing what your character looks like. So you might write something like this. Jacinta ran the tip of her finger down the length of her nose. She always did this when she was deep in thought, tracking the crooked bone slowly until she reached the pointed nub. Then she would tip repeatedly at the nub of her nose until she had come to a decision. So there I am just very lightly teasing the fact that Jacinta has a long crooked nose and that's it. That is enough to sort of give my character an idea of what Jacinta might look like. But also what I'm doing is establishing a tiny bit of what she looks like and the reader will now want to know more of what she looks like. So you're teasing, you're not giving everything away. You are just lightly drawing in a picture of what your main character might look like. Don't feel the pressure to describe exactly what she looks like or he looks like straight away. Tease it in. Your main goal should always be making the reader want more, okay? Even when it comes to characterization and even when it comes to setting. So don't feel as if you have to, a bit like describing your character, don't feel as if you have to describe your setting pretty much straight away. So if your book is set in Los Angeles, for example, don't feel as if you need to describe the LA sky and the LA skyline and the busyness of certain avenues within LA and, and the Hollywood Hills. Forget about that. You don't have to draw that picture in straight away. You can, you can drop it as the story goes, but you might just give out a little tease um, and suggest something like in the opening chapter that your main character likes to go for a one mile run on Venice Beach every morning before breakfast. And then you're giving the reader an inkling or a tease of where this story is set, but you're not being an over-the-top, over-descriptive -de writer in painting a picture, because your reader just doesn't want that. If you're teasing that this, this seems as if it might be set in LA, well, then your reader is probably gonna wanna read on to find out exactly what's going on with regards to setting. So if you're teasing setting and teasing characterization, and you're teasing your hook with a brow furrow, well then you're, you're leaving your readers wanting more, and remember, the goal of chapter one is to make your reader want to read chapter two. So all in all, it's very basic what I'm trying to suggest here. I'm not saying you need to establish all of these elements in your story. I'm saying you should tease them in to make sure your reader wants to continue reading. So I'm just gonna give you, if you don't mind, some examples in different genres of great opening chapters. Because I, as I said, I can't read out opening chapters in this video because we'd be here all bloody day and I have a two year old downstairs that I have to feed in a few minutes. So you might utilize the look inside free feature on Amazon to check out these opening chapters, which I think are the best in specific genres that I've ever read. Okay, so we'll start with this, YA books. Do check out the brilliant opening to Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, because there's no doubt that JK Rowling paints mystery and intrigue in her opening chapter, okay? So she ensures that the reader will want to get to chapter two as quickly as possible. It's all intrigue and mystery in JK Rowling's opening chapter. It's not, you know, describing exactly what the setting is and it's describing exactly what the characters are or describing exactly what the plot of this novel is. It's all teased in giving you, the reader, intrigue and curiosity 
to want to continue. So it's a great opening chapter for those who wish to write YA novels to learn from. And if you want to write crime thrillers, I would suggest reading this. Check out the opening to Michael Connolly's first ever book, The Black Echo, and notes how he begins right in the midst of the action. So remember I said that to you, don't feel as if you have to build towards the action. Start, open your story in the midst of the action, just like the Liz Nugent quote that I showed you earlier on. So Michael Connolly's opening to The Black Echo is a really good opening chapter to study if you wanna write crime. And if you wanna write psychological thrillers, then I recommend reading this opening chapter. Girl on a Train by Paula Hawkins. It really sets tone with so many teases. It teases out the main character, it teases out setting, and it teases out the plot or the hook brilliantly, okay? So you're already intrigued. So if you want to write psychological thrillers, I recommend studying that opening chapter to try and learn more about those teased elements that I'm talking about in this video. And if you want to write sci-fi, well then I recommend reading the opening chapter to this classic, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And know how Douglas Adams, uh, he suddenly paints in a new intriguing setting here, making the readers want to learn more about it. So he doesn't paint the setting, he teases it in, okay? So basically, I'm, I'm gonna end this video now and I'm gonna end it with this. All of these elements that you think you have to establish in chapter one, forget the fucking word establish you don't have to establish them you have to tease them okay and you do this subtly so your end goal for chapter one is to make this line appear on people's faces okay make that brow furrow and i'd also say don't feel the pressure to get chapter one right straight away so get it down it's the same way I would recommend getting your whole first draft of your entire story down and then come back on it. But you will want to work on chapter one again. So don't feel the pressure to perfect it on draft one, but do, the only pressure I would ask you to feel is to tease out those elements that I've talked about, okay? So if you're making your reader want to continue, then you've done a good job on chapter one. So I hope this has helped you some way I do go into much more detail in my online course and if you have ever been in one of my classes or lectures you will have found I've gone into much more detail on how to write an opening chapter. But the main element is one, make your readers brow furrow and two, tease, don't necessarily establish those elements, those simple elements such as characterization and setting. So no pressure, try and get down an opening chapter with these elements in mind or with these hints or tips in mind and hopefully you can perfect it then in later drafts so if you do want to hear more from me uh, do please hit subscribe below you can also visit my website theopenauthor.com where i have a host of these videos and a lot more information on how you can finally write that book idea that's here and get it down onto paper okay so i hope to see you in another video I'll talk to you soon. If you want, you can contact me through my website. Love to hear from you. I want to know how you're getting on. I'll see you then.